This video is sponsored by NordPass Business. Tis the season to reflect. Fa la 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 la. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. But I wanted to make a video about hardware that has had some kind of an impact for me this year. This is stuff that I got this year, so I'm not gonna like repeat stuff I've talked about in previous videos and stuff like that. But this is this is stuff that I've got either this year or extremely late last year that has just really helped me either in my working life or my personal life. None of this is in any particular order. This isn't a BuzzFeed ranked list. Uh, it's just stuff I like. So if you've been paying attention to my videos, in the background, you will probably notice a few things pop up. But one really big thing is keyboards. There's one there, there's one there, there's a couple over there, there's a whole bunch over there, there's a bunch down there. I've gotten really into custom mechanical keyboards this year. And my hands down favorite is the Mode 80. This is an 80% keyboard, completely customizable. Uh, and what that means is it comes apart. Like you have to assemble this yourself and you can choose how you put this together. So when ordering it, you get to pick from all the different parts, colors, and materials you want to put with it. So in this build, I used a brass plate, Duroc T1 tactical switches, Duroc V2 stabilizers, and then the keycaps are a KBD fans resonance keycaps set. I absolutely love the way this keyboard turned out and the way it sounds. It's perfect for me. I absolutely am so happy with this keyboard. Uh, I think I am up to like close to 15 mechanical keyboards. I know I have a problem. Uh, I just got really into them this year and it's a lot of fun building them. But ever since I've put this one together, I haven't really felt the need or want to even build any other keyboards. Like I've just, this is the one that's been at my desk. This is the one I use every day. I haven't really gone out to put together any other ones. Now, all that being said, if you're interested in mechanical keyboards, this is not a place to start. Like I mentioned, this, this comes completely disassembled. So you have to know what the PCB board is. You have to know how to put stabilizers together, what key switches work, whether you want hot swap or solder, all sorts of different things. Like I, I love this keyboard. If you know somebody took this from me, I would go out and buy another one again tomorrow in a heartbeat hand easily but it's not the place to start. Um, especially considering it is incredibly, incredibly costly. So if you are starting off with this key mechanical keyboard and you break something, that's gonna really hurt. Where I think like if you're interested in starting off in mechanical keyboards where it really works is something like Keychron. So this is the Keychron Q1. This is their, their higher end keyboard, but they have, they have a huge range of keyboards that you can pick from. Um, this is along the same lines as the Mode 80. This is a 75% keyboard, um, but it's, it's a really nice keyboard. It has volume knob and stuff like that. But what's cool about these Keychron keyboards is you can get them fully assembled with switches and keycaps, or you can get them in what they call bare bones and they're hot swaps. So what that means is you buy switches and keycaps separately. You provide yours so you can go through and test the different switches and find the ones that you particularly like, not necessarily the ones that they sell. There are, there are hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of switches out there. Uh, Maybe I should do a full video on mechanical keyboards, but um, you can find the switches you like, you can find the keycap set you like, and then you can kind of put it together yourself if you want to learn about mechanical keyboards that way. And this comes apart so you can do things like tape mods and stuff like that. There's, there's so many different things you can do mechanical keyboards. So um, if you're into mechanical keyboards, mode 80, love it, hands down my favorite keyboard. If you're looking to get into mechanical keyboards, Keychron is a great place to start. Kind of sticking with the keyboard theme, um, this guy right here is the BN009 macro pad. What this is, is a nine button macro pad. With this, you can swap out the switches 
and the keycaps if you want. And I did that to both. I put my own switches in here and I ordered these custom keycaps from WASD. They are media keys. And then I ordered four blank keys as well. Uh, so I am able to program this with an application called Via. Uh, it's a web app and you have to have a Chromium browser to use this. So you can't use it on the iPad. Uh, you have to have like a Mac or a PC running uh, a Chromium browser. It doesn't have to be Chrome. It could be something like Brave if you want. You can program this to do different things. So I obviously have this set up to do media keys. So play, pause, skip, volume controls. And then these four blank buttons run different shortcuts. Now, what I did in Via is I programmed the media keys right here. So these work not just with the Mac, but also with the iPad. I can do play, pause, skip, volume up, volume down. I can control that on the iPad as well as the Mac. That's really cool. And then with the four blank keys, what I did is I made them extra function keys. And then I went into the app on the Mac called Keyboard Maestro. It's a third party app. And I programmed those to launch various different shortcuts. You can also use Via to customize the mode keyboard, the Keychron keyboard, and basically just about any other custom mechanical keyboard with these media keys and function keys and a bunch of other things. Right now on my desk, I have the new Stream Deck because I'm testing that out. But this is one of those things I like just having it here, especially when it comes to like jumping between my Mac and my iPad setup because this works with both of those. The Stream Deck only works with the Mac. This video is sponsored by NordPass Business. NordPass is a place where you can store all of your sensitive information in an encrypted vault. This can be stuff like passwords, credit card information, secure notes, and more. When signing up for a service or a website, NordPass will suggest secure passwords for you. This is unique passwords. And the benefit of using a unique password is if that website is compromised in any way and hackers get a hold of your information, they aren't able to log into stuff like your bank accounts or your email, stuff that does have incredibly sensitive information. And one of the really cool things about NordPass is it has a feature called Data Breach Scanner. So that means if one of the websites that you have information information saved for in NordPass is compromised, it'll let you know and you can go in and change your login information for that site before you know anyone gets access to your accounts. And if you work with a group of people or you're the head of the IT department for your company and you're looking for a way for people to share credentials that isn't sending, you know, <laughs> username and passwords over plain text in like email or Slack or something like that. With NordPass, you can set it up so that you can share passwords with other users securely. Go to nordpass.com forward slash Christopher Lolly to get a three month free trial. My thanks to NordPass for sponsoring this video. Next up is the Anchor 747 150 watt charger. Every year I feel like I talk about a new charger and that's because charger technology has been evolving quite rapidly over the last few years. I really like this one, but disclosure, Anchor, the company that makes this, has sponsored me in the past. They've sponsored a few different videos. They don't know I bought this. I purchased this with my money. They don't know I'm covering this but I'm always gonna disclose this kind of stuff because I feel like it's the right thing to do. Uh, but they have no idea I bought this. They have no idea I'm covering this. I bought this myself. So like I said, this is a 150 watt charger, has three USB-C ports and a USB-A port. This is the only charger I keep in my backpack now. Before this, I used to have the other charger I'd talk about, which was another Anchor. It was a two port USB-C charger. This, this one has four ports, obviously. And I would also keep the uh, MacBook Pro charger in there as well because the other one didn't quite have enough juice to also charge my MacBook Pro if I was doing like high intensity video editing work, which is what I use my MacBook Pro for. This one has enough power to charge my MacBook Pro, no problem. And I can also plug my iPhone in, my Apple Watch in, iPad in, whatever else I need to plug in and it charges it. So this guy right here, which is smaller than the charging brick that comes with the MacBook Pro, by the way, does enough to charge all the devices that I travel with. So one thing that I've been really focused on this year, as far as traveling goes in my backpack, is taking stuff out of it. Like is the thing that is in my backpack something I actually need? So, or And if, the, if it is something I need, could I pair it with something else? So like, 
port replicators and hubs and stuff like that. I've got it down to exactly one hub that I have in my backpack. Now I have just one charging brick. So it's really important to me to just kind of like pare everything down and make my backpack as light as possible because once you start adding cameras, lenses, laptops, all, it gets heavy quickly. So this is really, really nice. For anyone that travels and needs to charge multiple devices, this is really great. The next one is the, and I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce this, Hoto, H-O-T-O, -O, electric screwdriver. Uh, somebody recommended this to me and for the life of me, I cannot remember who it is and I am, so sorry if you were watching this and it was you, let me know, you know, text me or whatever, because I am so sorry, I can't remember. But I absolutely love this thing. It is a solid combo. So you have the electric screwdriver right here. It has variable speeds. So it has three different speeds you can pick from and then off on the speeds. When you turn it on, it has an LED light. It has forward and reverse, of course but it also comes with all the bits you will need. So it's got Phillips, flathead, the hexagon ones, all the stuff that you could need slides right in and it's magnet, it's a magnet too. So like the bits don't just fall out easily. Like that's pretty sturdy. LED light, super, super handy. And then it charges via USB-C. So that's pretty cool. And it just sits in here like this. And it's just handy to have around my office. You know, I've been using it to assemble keyboards, but also put stuff together, take stuff apart. Um, you know, I get a lot of stuff that requires some assembly and stuff like that. And just having an electric screwdriver right next to me in my office is really nice. It's just really nice to have. So this next product, requires a bit of backstory and I feel really bad about buying it, but it has made a huge difference for me. So when I was 21, I was in a car accident. I got rear ended, uh, it totaled my car. And, and ever since then, I've had some back issues. It, like my back, it would just flare up mass. It would just be a massive amount of pain. And a lot of that was just because I was sitting a lot. Like I was sitting at a desk, I was working, whether it was at my IT job or editing videos or whatever. Like it, it, that was a big f cause of like flaring up that issue. So a couple years ago, I went to Office Depot and tried out a bunch of different chairs, found a really nice one. It, I think it was like regularly like 300 bucks, but it was on sale. I was like, sweet, awesome deal, bought it. And I hadn't really had any major issues since then. But this summer, something changed and my, oh, it destroyed my back. I was having massive problems. You know, I, I traced it back to the chair and I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I, I just can't use this chair anymore. So for years now, all of my friends that are, you know, self-employed, you know, have office jobs, desk jobs, video editors, whatever, they've all told me, get a Herman Miller chair, get a Herman Miller chair. And I've seen the price tag of them and my eyes just glaze over. I'm like, how do you spend that much for an office chair? Like, it's just, but I finally pulled the trigger and got the Herman Miller Aeron, Aeron, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's the one you're seeing in the B-roll shot. Now, I will fully admit I should have done this sooner. This chair has been perfect. All Ever since I got it all set up, put together, and like kind of let my back heal up, I haven't had any back issues. I sit for, in this thing for hours and hours a, a day. Like, I, I absolutely love it. Now, somebody's going to say you should just use a standing desk. My issue with standing desks, and I have one. This desk that I'm sitting at right now is a standing desk. Uh... My problem with it is my ADHD. If I'm standing, I just usually end up walking around and I don't get any work done. I have to be sitting at something and like facing a wall and like have all distractions away. That's why like my work desk is over there and like I just kind of like face the wall, I'm working. I, I can't do standing desk. So having a nice chair is really important. I'm the first to admit the prices are astronomical, but I'm 32 now and I need to take care of my body. I need to take care of my back. And if this truly does help my back and so far it has, worth it. Now, if you're looking to get something like this, what I would recommend starting off as is looking at Craigslist, Facebook marketplaces, those places that sell like um, office furniture from businesses that have gone uh, out of business and stuff like that. Like look, look at places like that because the secondhand market for these chairs 
are huge. Like you can pretty much find these all over the place. The one thing I will recommend is look at the Herman Miller size chart uh, and make sure you get the right size chair for you. I'm 6'1 and I use the medium size chair. I've talked a lot about iPad stands and this year I got my absolute favorite iPad stand. This is the Lab 22 Infinity Adjust iPad stand. I did a full review of it. I'll link to that and all the other stuff I talked about in the description below. Um, but like the short of it is, it is an adjustable iPad stand. It adjusts every which way you can imagine. You can put it down low for a drawing mode. Uh, I like to keep it up high and next to my monitor when I'm working at my desk with the iPad. I've tried a lot of different iPad stands and for a lot of different reasons that I covered in that other video, this one is hands down my favorite. It's been sitting next to my monitor. It's been sitting on my desk, whether it's in drawing mode or a high up tablet mode or whatever you want to call that. Uh, th this has been on my desk and I absolutely love it. Late last year, uh, I was kind of having some issues with file management. I was having to delete projects and video clips and stuff that I really wanted to keep around because I knew I would use again in the future, but I just didn't have enough storage. So I finally pulled the trigger and got a NAS. Now, uh, I got the five bay Synology NAS and it's full of 12 terabyte drives. It works out to about 60 terabytes, but after the RAID configuration, it's like, it's over 40 terabytes of usable space. I use this for device backups, projects, footage, and photo archives. It is so incredibly handy to have and has saved my bacon because I'm able to like take projects I'm either not able to continue working on in this moment or stuff I want to save because I know I'm going to need stuff from it like clips and photos and images and whatever from it in the future. I'm able to just back it up there. Plus it allows me to do time machine backups to it without having to physically plug in a drive. So the benefit of this, since I use a MacBook Pro and not a desktop computer, is I if I was using an external drive, I would need to eject the drive every single time I was like gonna like run out the door with my MacBook or something like this. With a NAS, I can just close up my MacBook. It cancels the time machine backup so it doesn't finish that backup, but I don't have to worry about ejecting the drive all the time or leaving the drive behind or making sure I remember to plug the drive in even. It's just backing up when I'm at home. It's just constantly doing a backup. Super nice, super nice to have. I'm gonna do a full video about how I've kind of like set it up later on because I think there's a lot of really interesting things you can do with it. So like I have one NAS, but I have multiple shares on it. So like I have one that's dedicated just for time machine. So that way it doesn't eat up like all 40 something terabytes of usable space. Then I have like an archive and things like that. The newest item on this list is this guy right here. Uh, this is the Nomad Sport Apple Watch Band. It's the orange rugged band. And this orange one in particular is a limited edition one. So if you're interested in like the color orange, uh, go now because I don't know how many they have. It is a limited edition thing. It was designed to work with the Apple Watch Ultra, which I ordered one, then canceled it because it's a lot of money. And I look, I'm no scuba diver or mountain climber or anything like that. Uh, but I just really like this orange band. So I was like, okay, I'll get the orange band. And it looks okay with my Series 7. I think it looks pretty good. I like the way it feels. Um, a lot of times with the rubber bands, what I don't like about them is they, they make my wrist feel sweaty. Now we're in the middle of winter time. That might, it might change in the summer, but right now I don't have that issue. So we'll, we'll see, you know, summertime come around and stuff if, if that's still the same issue. But I really like this one. Um, I've been jumping between this one and the Apple leather watch band a lot. Okay, so we covered a bunch of third party hardware, but what about some first party Apple hardware? Hands down, the thing Apple released this year that has made the biggest difference for me is the studio display. It is exactly what I wanted out of a monitor. It's the 27 inch iMac panel put right into an external monitor with a retina display, good speakers, a single cable to both charge and do the display connection to your device. This is exactly what I want. I'm so happy with this monitor. It looks so beautiful. 
both the design of it, like the physical display and what's on the display. If you haven't actually like been able to sit in front of one of these, I recommend going to the Apple store or finding a friend or somebody that has one and just sit in front of it because, or, or maybe don't do it because it will ruin you. Uh, I have tried and used and have had a bunch of different like designer monitors. Like, you know, those monitors that are made like, this is a high end, high resolution monitor for graphic designers and video editors and stuff like that. This one absolutely destroys them. And for the price tag, it should. Having a true retina monitor on my desk, so nice. It's it's exactly what I want. And um, when iPadOS 16.2 comes out and you can plug, you know, if you have an M-series iPad into it and get external monitor support, really nice. My other favorite Apple product that was released this year are AirPods Pro 2. Uh, these took what I liked about the AirPods Pro and made them better. So... Uh, improve sound quality, no, better noise canceling, better transparency mode, uh, volume controls on the stem, and better battery life. It, exactly what I need. Like it checked off all the boxes on uh, like, hey, if you know Apple came to me and said, how how could we improve these? That would have literally been everything I asked for. On my first generation AirPods Pro, the battery was already starting to go. I got them day one. I use them every day. You know, when you charge lithium ion batteries over and over and over again, they don't they don't hold the b battery health as, as much as they did on day one. It's just physics. So they were already starting to go. But that aside, knowing how good these are, like if I wouldn't got to try these and stuff like that, I would have just bought the upgrade no matter what uh, because th this, at least in this year where generational updates aren't that significant, like, like Gen 1 to Gen 2 or Gen 2 to Gen 3, you know, that kind of sequential thing where generational updates aren't that big of a deal anymore. I think these are. Now, these didn't come out a year after the first generation AirPods. They took some time, but still, they're, they're a generational update. So that's it for this video. Like I mentioned, I'll put links to everything in the description below. My thanks to NordPass for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching and have a great day.